All right, well, this is Aaron Squire coming to you guys again, episode 51. With me again is Armies of Mordor. Uh, yeah, he's on the payroll now. So <laughs> we've, uh, we've had to add some, some, you know, I'm not sure where the money's actually coming from, but uh, yeah, he's on the payroll now. So, so yes, he will be on the uh, show quite a bit. Actually, he'll be on like whenever I ask him, and he's good enough to come on, actually. So tonight on Deck of the Squire, we're going to talk about uh, some of the uh, contest people that didn't do the contest quite right, some of the actions that they can take to get something, but they aren't going to be able to get their three packs. Uh, lawsuit update, Hextex Open, the Gem Reserves Declaration by Bill, or I'm sorry, by Ben Stoll. Bill. Bill Nye? Uh, he's a science guy. <laughs> Uh, the new five shards uh, dot com that is being uh, put together by Zubrin. The accidental night is now digital for all the backers, so you can get your hands, your sweaty little hands, on one and read through it. Although someone has already read through all of it. Lots of someone's, not just me. All right, fine. <laughs> and then the Friday update, and then we're gonna work on some sort of a ruby deck, right? Is that right? Is that... I think we're, we're going for a set two mono ruby deck. Ah, yes, because that's going to be pretty sweet. So let's go ahead and get right down to it, starting off with some of the uh, lawsuit stuff. So again, this was posted by Mock uh, on the Hex TCG Reddit website. Um, not a lot to talk about again. They're still in discovery. There's some argument about when it is they have to present the different things. Um, probably the most interesting thing on here is this on the bottom where it talks about a high-level backer that is going to be uh, joining the case as a witness, possibly. So that could mean that it's going to be some sort of a uh, the $10,000 backer, which is the, oh, I forget what it's called, the, uh, the producer, right? So um, any thoughts on this before I continue on with... Um, I don't know if they confirmed it was that high of a level backer. I mean, that's what everyone thinks of. Everyone always immediately goes to the highest level possible. I mean, this person is probably at least, I don't know, probably at least $2,500. I don't know. It says high level backer. Well, high is very... Uh, yeah, it's kind of arbitrary, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of arbitrary, because for a card game that you spend $2 for a pack of cards, high might be $250 or $500 yeah, or $1,000. that is what I was... Yeah, I don't know. It's just... Whatever. Anyways, like, if it was anyone, like, my guess or my money is that it could be on... Uh, the guy that was a backer and he had a company that was going to help Cryptozoic out with some of their server stuff in the Asian area. Um, I forget what his name is, but you know, if I was going to guess at someone that might be... I mean, I wouldn't think there would be that much bad blood, but it's possible. So, I mean, I have no idea. This is all conjecture. So, I mean, it could, could be anybody, really. Um, but they also talked about like people in the uh, thing, you know, of course, the, the the uh, conjecture flies um, in the comments, and people are like, "Well, are they going to start subpoenaing all the, uh, you know, the ten thousand dollar backers and all that stuff?" And I don't know. I don't think that's going to happen. That's well, a little bit ridiculous. I mean, plus, I think the context of the witness is they're just trying to prove that Cryptozoic and Hex Entertainment are essentially like the same, like the same ownership, because they were just talking about like. They will testify that the money was sent to Cryptozoic LLC and not Hex oh, Entertainment. Oh, they're trying to produce. Yeah, so they can go after Cryptozoic. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's safe. all. I think that's all that witness is. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. As from a from a lawyer standpoint, they're going to try to get as much as they possibly can. So it's like you know, why would you go after you know the the small little company when you can go after the parent company and get so much more? So, sure, whatever. All right. So enough of that mean-spirited stuff. Let's go ahead and move on to the Hextex Open. And the first things first we're going to talk about is the two banned cards that are banned in there. Can you guess what they are? I don't have to guess. I already well, know. No, I know you already know, but can anybody anybody <laughs> else guess? No, it's not Zentos Inquisitor. It's not Vampire King. Although Inquisitor would change the face of the tournament, as it did uh, in previous tournaments. Uh, that we had for the Hex TCG Pro tournament. No, it's actually the <laughs> Hop Hero Samurai. And for the, those people that are like, what card is that? That is the 
leveling card that is actually a hop hero. It's in blood, and every time you, every time uh, something dies, you he gets a, a counter. Troop is, a troop and is he, sacrificed. Every time a troop is sacrificed, right? And you can sacrifice troops to him, but they don't have to be sacrificed to him. Just any sacrifice. He gets counters, and the, the deal is he's getting counters, he levels up, and then the counters don't go away. They stay on him, so they can immediately level him all the way to the third uh, mode. But he's still not really good enough to be played. Uh, the other one is Plant Garden, which is the one that when you get such and such counters on it, you can make random things. I guess that it is also broken in some way, so you can't play Plant Garden. The, the counters don't reset like it was supposed to right. and so for each bolt extra copy that you play you'll gain more life than you normally would oh, okay so because uh, you would gain one life for every counter on it at the start of your turn so if you have all four copies you will gain a stupid amount of life i didn't even notice this homestar runner now has a reddit wow i didn't know they were still around <laughs> Love me some Homestar Runner. So the Hextex Open, for those of people that don't know, and I'm sorry, Hextex people, that I did not announce this, whatever, three weeks ago when you started this announcement. Yeah, 11 November. I'm really sorry. I, I did see it, and it's been a very busy month for me trying to uh, line up episode 50. But it's tomorrow, so I think you can still sign up. You have to send your deck list into the Hextex, uh, TV at gmail.com. Uh, you need to basically have everything in line 90 minutes prior to the f start of the first round. That's the latest you can do it. So the first round is going to be starting tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time or 9 a.m. Central Standard Time or 8 uh, a.m. Mountain Standard Time or 7 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. I always hate waking up for these tournaments, but I do it anyway. Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? You gotta drag yourself out of bed. It's not too bad. 7 a.m. For me, it's pretty bad. Yeah, 7 a.m. I yeah, always get At least the you have the rest of your day. <laughs> right? So, I uh, hope you guys come out to that. Let's see how many people have signed up for it. Let's see here. Challenge! So, it looks like. Uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 times 4 would be 32, 64 people are signed up right now. So let's try to get that more to, you know, closer to 100. But with 64 people, I mean, that's uh, six round tournaments. So if it stays this way, that's actually not bad. As soon as we get player number 65, it actually goes to a seven round tournament. So that is that. That's right, right? Is that the right math? I think that's the right. Um, does it does it go to that if there's a buy every round? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it still goes. Yeah, as soon as you go one over, because like like if you had an eight person tournament, as soon as you get a ninth person, it just it just it goes into the uh, from it goes from a three round tournament to a four round. It just does. It's just the way it works. So another interesting thing is that Ben Stoll confirmed that you are supposed to be able to change your socketed cards in between matches, which is probably more important right now for all of the limited players than it is for, like, uh, constructed players, because there's not a lot of shard or uh, gemmed cards that really um, have seen a lot of play in the meta, except for, like, I guess, Zine Toss Inquisitor and... Um, and uh, Elder Streamer. Reaver. Although, I guess with Zine Toss Inquisitor, that means that you could play... Uh, what's his name? You could play Neo's deck, where it's the it's the mill deck, and then if you say, oh, I really need to debuff some things, you could change your Inquisitors from mill into the uh, minus 3, minus 0, and that would really... You, yeah, that, you I could that also... You could also theoretically splash a Ruby Shard in your sideboard if you think that your opponent is playing like, no troops... That way your Inquisitors can dome your opponent for three instead of shrinking their non-existent troops. I suppose, yeah. That would be some tech, though. I, I think that would hurt you more than it would help you. I, I mean, chances are, like, there's only like, one troopless deck out there, and I don't think it's that great. It's the uh, the one with uh, uh, Archmage Renlock. Well, I mean, it's, it doesn't have it to be goes to time. I think that's the, my biggest problem with it. It's not horrible. It doesn't have to be a troopless deck. It could be a troopless deck or any deck that everything in it has spell shield. Yeah, but that one is but also you're one playing, we don't see You're playing anymore. against the Soul Marble deck. Sure. But typically, you when know. we try to make decisions, <laughs> we... Uh, hey, what's going on, Pentachills? Uh, glad to see you in here. I know that you're streaming, so... Um, <laughs> always uh, always appreciate you stopping by. 
Uh, Pentachills is uh, one of the five shards ahead, which we're about to talk about the new website, Five Shards Ahead, right? So the Five Shards Ahead website is the new brainchild of basically most of the people from the Two Turns Ahead podcast, as I understand it. Pentachills is in the channel. If he was in the show channel, he could actually probably talk about it if he wanted to, but he's probably actually recording for next week's Two Turns Ahead episode while he's in my channel. I don't know what he's doing, actually. I guess we could just ask him. But, um, but yeah, they started a new website. This looks like they're pulling in a lot of big names. You know, they've got, uh, you know, Pentachills, for one, Zubrin. Um, they've also got, uh, what's his name, uh, Function Fails is coming on board, and a whole bunch of people. Um, right now, there's, you know, there's a lot of different uh, changes going on within the, the Hex uh, community as far as people that are providing content. Um, some some sites are going away. Other sites are becoming less, you know, used and other stuff. So this is kind of just a natural progression, and I welcome it. You know, I always have said that I welcome more and more uh, content providers because competition is good for the marketplace because it forces us all to get better and produce better content. Um, so yes, I'm all for endorsing this. This is fiveshards.com is what the website name is and I, I I heard the first 30 minutes of last week's podcast which is two hours long by the way uh, and they talk about how annoyed that they are that this isn't the number five and shards like two turns ahead it's the number two turns ahead so um, maybe they'll get something to mirror that so that way if you type in the number five and shards it'll mirror and it'll redirect to this which is very possible you know DNS and all that domain name systems yeah. So, um, are you excited about this at all? Uh, you know, what do you think about this? I was mentioned in the Jovial Pivot article. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah. So. I know. I know some. I know some of the uh, the writers. Uh, yeah. Me too. They're in me my too. playtest group. Yeah, we've had some people <laughs> on the show. Although I think Penta has not been on the show. In fact, I invited him on, but I know there's some conflicts, so we may have to pre-record something so uh, the site apparently is still in a bare bones state although it doesn't really look like it that much to me uh, but apparently there's going to be a lot more work done and it's going to be even better and they even it looks like they don't have a store or anything but they are they're also this might be the new home of the rock league as well so uh you know go ahead and check it out make sure you uh check them out as well as supporting all of the other um hex content providers that are out there um, I'm always uh, welcoming more and more people. Moving on to the Accidental Night, which is available for all of the people that backed on Kickstarter, including myself. I went ahead and downloaded it on my laptop in the uh, P... What is it? The format e for the... Whatever, the Kindle Fire, which is my wife, so I'm going to have to hijack this puppy, read it on there, Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, so, uh, Armies, you said that you've actually read through this? I read it on release day. Just blew through it four Just hours. Blew through it four hours. Yep. Yeah, it's gonna take me like three days, maybe, if I if I'm reading constantly, fighting the children off. Maybe I'll just read it to them at bedtime, and that's that will be their bedtime story, "The Accidental Night" by Christy Golden. Which I'll be by the get way, them addicted to hex. Well, there, yeah. I mean, my son <laughs> will he'll sit with me, and he'll he, we did do a draft with my son. I don't know if you guys saw it, where we drafted five. Uh, what was it? We drafted five of the one where it's Ruby, and you you get resources for one. Oh, turn. oh, uh, the. Uh, it was pretty bad. That was the worst. I know. I saw that. I ah. saw. I saw you play that. Oh, it's so good. To, but anyways, uh, I really want. What I really want to talk about is Christy Golden. So I have her on Twitter, and so once in a while, I'll, something will come up, and I'll be like, "Hey, Christy Golden, you should come on. You know, Deckman with the Squire, trying to get excited. You know, talk to you about hex and that type of thing." And so. So I may have stepped on some toes with that, but I did get a decent response back. Uh, so Hex actually responded to me about my request to her and said, yeah, we can try to set something up with her, but we need to get a set of questions. So here's what I need you, the community, to do. And you guys have been really bad about this, so I'm just going to shame you right now. We need some comments on this when it gets posted on YouTube. And I'm probably going to start a thread on the forums. You guys need to give me some questions that you want me to ask Christy Golden so we can set up an interview. And if this doesn't happen, if you don't give me any questions, then the interview is not going to happen. So 
yeah, let's let's you know. I I think it would be important for us to talk to Christy about uh, a lot of the lore of what she thinks things should be like in Hex, and it would also be helpful if I've read the book. So it probably won't happen right away, but I really want to have a lot of questions, and I'm going to do my best to get this to happen and set something up. You know, maybe before Christmas or maybe sometime after the New Year, um, I can try to set up uh, an interview with Christy Golden. I think it would be awesome to have uh, that interview. We'll probably do something pre-recorded I think um, so yeah so if you were to ask a question to Chrissy Golden now that you've read the book what would you ask her look at that I just popped Do that you question have I any... probably a pre-game that before the show yeah well, that's alright I, I yeah. can think on my toes yes Crimson Clarity that was it yes Crimson Clarity okay my question would be do you have any plans on doing a book from the other perspective from the the underworld perspective mm, I think that that was asked when uh, what's his name interviewed her when um, Mike Kirchhoff I think that that was one of the things that he may have asked her during that interview because I do remember reading through all of that so uh, apparently she has a map of Entrath so if she could bring that that would be pretty awesome to see too so again if you have questions that I can ask Christy Golden Please post on this YouTube video. Please, you guys have been, you know, better lately because I've got 400, you know, subscribers now on YouTube. But, you know, let's let's do even better and get lots of, you know, stuff. And it, again, on Deck Build the Squire, if you are a content provider and you want me to promote you, just contact me and I will get you on the show. We will work something out. I can work with you. Um, additionally, if you want some help building a deck, I'm always available for you to submit a deck idea to where you say, ah, we have this, and you can constrain me by saying, I only have these rares, and we will build your deck live on the show. Take me about 30 minutes to plow through it. and um, you know, Or if you don't want to have your deck hi uh, featured on the show, still send me the deck, and I will uh, send you a private message back and, and uh, give you some of my opinions on uh, what you're building and... Uh, you know, and again, it's all opinions. So, moving on to the next thing we've got is the Friday update. Tell your friends. So this tells me that Hex maybe was expecting this giant like influx of people, and they didn't get as many as they wanted, and uh, that's a bad thing if that's what's going on. But yeah, definitely tell your friends. I've been telling my friends, and it seems like the hype train has kind of uh, pulled into the station, and it's not ready to you know start its engine up anytime soon so maybe set two will help out with a, with that a little bit um i'm trying to get other people to uh try it out but um yeah it's it's very difficult especially now because we you know people want to get in and do the pve the free pve and do as much of that as possible and that's not available yet um so soon yeah soon. December, hopefully <laughs> so before we move on to the next uh news item on the page which is the vip tournaments what do you want to tag anything onto that armies yes at the bottom there's a little segment in the friday update that says starting monday every day at 9 a.m they're going to be posting spoilers and oh to yeah follow them on twitter or facebook to get notified when the spoilers go up yep and so um, yeah, and I will repost them as much as I see them. So uh, that that's gonna gonna be a very very exciting times because we're gonna see some more stuff. Which again, we haven't seen all of set two, so there's probably some stuff that's hidden in there that um, you know I, I like I was talking to armies before. We've seen some of the bombs, but I think there's some bombs we're missing that they haven't unleashed on us yet. Uh, moving on to the VIP tournaments next week. We've got the Menacing Gralk uh, alternate art, which looks pretty awesome. There it is. Hopefully it'll come up. And you can also get the Inquisitor alternate art. And apparently it's my internet is just being pegged out, so that's why it's probably not coming up. Maybe it will eventually. But you can win these by playing in a constructed four rounds of Swiss next weekend. And it looks like there are one, two, three, four, five time slots you could possibly play. I'll be playing in at least one of these. I'm not sure which one yet. But it should be uh, a really good time. You only have to go two, two wins to uh, to get at least one of your uh, alternate arts. Um, armies, uh, anything to uh, tag on with that? Are you with? Me? Uh, I'll I'll definitely be I'll definitely be playing, but I've got my my playset of them. So He's rubbing I, it in with the playset thing right now. I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not going to be in, under as much pressure as some people to uh, to do well. All right, so 
Moving on, they uh, you know talk about following them on uh, Facebook and Twitter, and then they they talk about the we've already seen these cards. The Filk Ape is probably the most anticipated card right now, with the uh, the new set. I mean, it's a really nice body. It has that amazing revert ability. It's gonna add on a lot of uh, functionality to Wild. Additionally, one of the more exciting ones to me is the one that's counter to the Mono Sapphire, which I think it's a 3-2 two for 2, right? And it's uh, But it's unique. And it says that your troops don't e exhaust, which is basically a uh, card that says no to, um, to uh, Grulk. menacing Grolk. All it really means is that I have to now wait till I have 7 resources so I can bounce that troop and then play my Grolk, but... Um, but definitely uh, it's going to change the metagame quite a bit by having to play that. In fact, I think what's going to happen is we will see Mono Sapphire playing a lot more, uh, what is it called, uh, the two-point damage uh, thing. Sapper's uh, Charge? Sapper's Charge, yeah. We'll be playing, I think they'll be seeing a lot more Sapper's Charge now in Mono Sapphire after that card comes out. Yeah, Phil Cape is definitely a card that's going to warp the meta because it cancels out all the Inspire effects it cancels out all the cost increasing effects. It cancels out all of these just permanent like inquisitors can't debuff anything anymore if you have if you have fill cape and it also resets one shots. So you'll see a lot of interesting decks made. Yeah, for sure. All right, so moving on to the uh, deck doctor, we actually have plenty of time. We got about thirty seven minutes to build this deck. So we are going to build Mono Ruby Aggro because we do think that it's going to take uh, at least you know, a position in the metagame as soon as the new set is released. So first things first, let's go ahead and make a deck because I didn't do that pre-game. I didn't do that pre-show. So we'll call this Set 2 to Mono Ruby. We'll call it that. Creating the deck here. I'm making my way downtown. Walking fast. Do, 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 do. All right, so we'll go ahead and start off by just throwing in the obligatory 23 ruby shards in there. And we've already turned on um, ruby and no shards. I think that's too many. It probably we, will be. It probably we, will be. We, we want the non-basic shard, too. Oh, you we want... want it gives uh, two shards. Yeah, we want crackling, the... Crackling Vortex. Does that give us a resource, though? It gives us a resource. It the, comes the, the turn comes into play. The turn it, it comes into play. It gives you a resource and it gives you two charges, but it doesn't give you any threshold. Okay, well that's fine. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. So yeah, yeah we it's definitely want to play these. It's completely usable in a mono ruby deck. It makes rampaging Tarask kind of like a uh, six drop instead of a five Feldespar. drop, but I believe that's going to be for Phil Cape. Your question, Feldespar, is it's most likely going to be troops on the board, but don't hold me to that. Yeah, because I, other I things, would imagine troops on the board. Because uh, stranger things have happened in Hex when I bounce a soul marble in the counters, in the middle of counters trying to be placed on it, and they still get placed on it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, I think that's working as intended, so. Uh, let's go ahead and get with the most exciting card we'll probably be adding to Mono Ruby, which is Crackling Bolt. And uh, it's so exciting that it sounds like Zachary, my uh, now one-year-old, is very excited about it in the background. You can hear him. Yep, he's talking about it. I can hear him talking. Crackling Bolt is it deals three damage. Unfortunately, it's at basic action speed. So you're going to have to do it on your turn during your first or second main phase. Still um, amazing. It's still amazing. <laughs> you can deal three damage to target champion or troop and gain a charge, which means that we can now again have a turn three Blaze Elemental when we play with Polka. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and throw Polka in here. Polka, Polka, Polka. Oh, I can control quick, click? Okay, to add four at a time. I'm learning stuff all the time. You guys are here to teach me. It's not me teaching you, it's you teaching me. Let's see, so some of the other obligatory cards we'll probably put in here. I mean, the burns will probably go in the Rage Fire. Um, I'm not sure if we need as much burn as we used to run, though. Uh, but rage fire is pretty obligatory. I think I think a mono ruby burn deck, which is what I was showing you before the show, is completely viable. But you don't have to play a burn deck if you want to play a gore feast mono ruby deck. I'm sure that'll still be completely playable as well. Whatever style suits you, I'm sure it'll be. Right, fine. Whatever floats your boat, right? Exactly. 
I'm not control clicking like the guy. He just told me about that. I'm not. We probably don't actually want to play Mentor of Flames here. This feels like a, a more of a mid range Ruby deck type of card. I mean, what do you think about Mentor of Flames in this deck? I, do you have them I in think, yours? I think I don't have them in mine. I think Mentor of Flames plays better in like the Inspire deck. Oh, I see what you're doing in yours. You're, so in his deck, he's he's running 21 Ruby shards, four Crackling Vortex, four Burn, four. Burn to the ground, four Rage Fire, four Tarrasque, four Crackling Bolts, four Arena Regular, four Ebony Pawn, and four Sapper Shards, and four Hired Horn Cell Sword. I think I want to have troops on the board, is when I play typically. Um, yeah, so I think that that's, that's more of my play style. I don't like to just go in on all spells because I feel like it's, if they can gain life, then. They, it puts me in a bad situation, a situation which I prefer yeah, not to be in. It's why Ember's Fire, which is in the sideboard, but yeah, I I, feel I would main you. deck her in something like that <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna run that strat strategy. That's actually let's let's click on uh, PVP cards so we can get rid of some of these cool PVE cards that we will eventually get to play with one day, someday, someday. Hopefully. So do we think Except Pyromancer <laughs> goes in here? These days, um, if you depending on what kind of ruby deck you want, you could go pyromancer, better pyromancer, falconer. If you wanted to play that kind of a deck, yeah, I do like falconer in here. I think that that's definitely a, a pretty boss type of card. Um, it's really unfortunate that uh, falconer is four drop because he just kind of takes the place of uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Zoltog. Zer Zoltog. You know, you can't play Zoltog over Falconeer. You really just can't do it. Well, you could do it if you were playing the Blood Ruby Orc deck, but... Uh, Reloaded X is showing us uh, his uh, deck. We'll pull that up at the end of the program, so we'll see what you're doing with yours, and we'll talk about it a bit. I'm not sure if I want to run a, like a one of Plan C in here. Nice thing about Ruby is it's just so simple to build. We could probably build like you know ten of these in a, in about thirty minutes. Gorfi says like a two of or a one of, probably a two of. It's just too good to pass up, really. But that that fills our four point range. We really can't really put anything else in here. Let's see. Do we want to put in any of the uh, the tunnelers? That seems a little slow. That doesn't seem very worth it. Uh, the the dwarf two two that when it comes to play gives you three resources. You don't have to tunnel at all, so you can just go like, I play four two twos on turn three or something. If right. You had all the Which we've hands. seen in other card games, right? Going well, it's usually they cost two, and I think it was Burning Tree emissary, but yeah, similar concept. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like what we were talking about with the. Uh, the other the, the wild version where you know you were talking about gem snatchers plus stink troll so you, you know just walk us through that again um, with uh, gas troll plus gem snatchers then stink troll right like the curve would be turn so one play wild gas troll gas troll is a one one with crush the game's yep. player permanent one one whenever you play a ruby card so then your two drop is you can play gem snatchers with with uh, the plus one plus one gem and speed, so it'll be a two two for two with speed. So you swing in for four damage on turn two. On turn three, you can play Stink Troll, and Stink Troll has a zero cost one shot ability that you can give a troop crush, and all of your troops have crush or that have crush get permanent plus one plus one. So because that card's a ruby card, it will pump the gas troll into a three three, and then which already it'll has gain crush. It's already has Crush, so it gets another plus one, plus one, so it's a 4-4. Yep. Four, four. And then you can give the Crush to your 2-2, two, two, which makes it into a 3-3, three, three. so you can swing in for 7 on turn 3, and then on turn 4 you've got 10 power on the board, and you can poke a Gore Feast and do like 40 more damage, because it, that was just... <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> the curve is really good. good in that deck. Yeah. Uh, and plus, I think they're all single threshold, too. Yes, yeah. they're all so that's that's really good, and we'll have we'll have a lot more shards so we can actually uh, curve out properly with that deck. So I think that that's a very viable, uh, very possible deck that's going to be out there, especially because it's very cheap to build as well. Oh yeah, that deck is probably going to be like ten dollars or something, and you could just kill people on turn four. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. Uh, Anarchist saw a lot of play when I was at Gen Con. Um, he was in a lot of the decks. I, I like him. 
Um, I'm not sure if I like him in here. I think I like him in here. I think we, I want to play Anarchist in here. Seems pretty good. He's got speed. Deals damage. We both draw cards. I don't care because I'm just going to just he's, keep... He's clunky for the deck because if you turn one Gastro, he'll never play him on turn well, I'm two. Talk, no, I'm talking about for the deck we're, we're building now. Oh, oh about, yeah, for the yeah, Mono Ruby deck? control click thing. Oh, it uh, works. Yeah. Um... I don't know if he's necessarily going to be better than the Arena Regular. Well, Arena because, Regular will also go in here, yeah. We have to be careful yeah, on our two-point range now, though. I, I kind of I don't really like the Anarchist as a later game draw. Like, I think he'd be great on turn two, but, like, later in the game, he probably won't get through, whereas Arena Regular, even if you can't attack with it, you can still, you know, play a charge, deal a damage, you know, type of deal. So we're being asked about, Reloaded's asking us about Hired Horn Cell Sword, which is a 4 tooth crush for 3, which is really that, good. When it, that card's amazing. When it dies, deal 4 damage to each opposing champion. So it's like a guaranteed 4 points of damage unless it gets uh, counter magic um, No. I think it's pretty it's, amazing. It does 4 damage to them if they don't have any troops when it dies. Oh, so versus, uh, versus like Extinction. Right. So. Yeah, it's good for its extinction. It's also good if they only have one troop and they have to block. Like, the way I see this playing out is you play it on turn three and they play, like, their, their Cerulean Mentalist or something. You know, like, something right. that can trade with it if they want to, but if they trade with it, they're still going to take five. Because um. of the crush. Like, it crushes one through their defense, and then if they kill it, but they don't have anything else, they take an additional four. It's a really solid card. It could even go in the Gastral deck because it's a three drop with two Ruby, which means you could play it on turn three if right. you don't have, like, the Stink Troll to play. And you could also play the Scrap Tech Brawlers in that deck, too, because having a three drop that lets you play another three drop that you're only playing Ruby three drops can make your deck go pretty much insane for your turn four. This control keys. click thing is pretty awesome, just saying. This is making this much faster, by the way. So... I should give you something just for telling me about that. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we need that many of those. Maybe two. So we're gonna we're definitely our two point range is definitely gonna have to come down. We're gonna have to make some hard decisions. I don't think we're gonna play the pyromancer in here, although it is really good. I don't know. I I really don't know that I can make room for it in the two point range. Well, uh, if well you I don't, don't know, but yeah, you don't necessarily if, have to play the Ruby Pyromancer. You can play the Greater Pyromancer instead at the three drop level that gives Inspire plus that, two I don't attack. Know if that's in here. G R E G R E A. Elite Pyromancer. This one? Yeah, Elite Pyromancer, yeah. It's basically Ruby Pyromancer, but. And then some. Big but that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, playing both of these plus. Actually, you know what? Playing both of those plus playing Falconeer seems pretty. Yeah, sick. you can you can definitely play the Mono Ruby Humans deck in this format. You yeah. can play the the one one for one that gets plus one attack for every human you control. You can play Pyromancer. You can play the Elite Pyromancer. You can play Falconer. You can play Lord Alexander and top your curve with uh, Legionnaire of Gawain. Yeah, Gawain could also be a blowout as well. We have 19. We have 20. We could probably actually go down to 22 shards maybe in here. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to run a full place at a Falconeer right now in here for, because of the four-point range. If I'm going down to 22 shards, two drops, we still need to get rid of a lot, though. We may actually end up getting rid of Rage Fires. Rage Fire is good. It's just... It's just like one of those cards where I have to redraw it. Probably Anarchist is probably the worst card here, so we'll get rid of that. That's a pretty easy choice. I'm really liking this right now. It looks pretty uh, pretty solid to me. Um, not sure that I actually need a play set of Tormentor. Most people were playing two of these back when uh, this deck was really popular and people were doing well with it. Yeah, I really think Tormentor is just not... I think it's pretty underwhelming most of the time. Yeah, I mean, you have to empty your hand out, but you're going to be doing that anyways. Um, well, you're, Ridge, you're Ridge Raider trying, also. You're going to be trying to. I don't to. know if I'd rather have that or Ridge Raider, though, because Ridge Raider, let's see, we need Orcs. I don't know if we even have any. I, don't know, I, don't, I wouldn't Arena play Ridge Raider either. I'm, yeah. I mean, this deck might not even play a one-drop. I, I still want to have one. Be, 
It doesn't just, have to be that aggressive. I, I, if I'm playing Ruby, I have to have a one drop. It's, it's like a rule with me. Well, if you want to play a one drop, there is the human. We, how many humans are in the deck? Is there the one one quite human a few that gets now. plus one, one attack two, for every human you control? Three. Yeah, I mean the human's probably better. The one drop human. Let's see. Yeah, the. Guess we'll just type. Maybe if I just type in human, it'll come up. Uh, it may or may not because, because the, the like yeah, the typing the is were booked. But also have Prince Tallison. Let's see. I forget what this guy does exactly. Uh, when he deals damage to an opposing champion, void the top card of your deck. Play that card for free. That's pretty sick. We could definitely uh, three of this guy in there. He's unique. Yeah, I, I mean, know. two, three I of. He doesn't have crush, and he's only got one back end. Yeah. So I I don't know if he would be better than, say, like, right, like a one of Ruby uh, 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 Aura or something. I don't know. Maybe a one of. I think he's, I think he's really good. Uh, the one drop I'm thinking of is Wounded War Hero. Okay, let's, let's find that. Wounded. Yeah, this guy saw a lot of play, too. Um, of course, these are the pictures from Gen Con. That's why the images aren't that great. For each other human. Yeah, this seems... Yeah, this seems... We're, we're kind of like playing this Mono I mean, Ruby it, human. <laughs> yeah, if you want to play Mono Ruby humans, then that would be your one drop for sure. Yeah, I think so as well. So we can definitely get rid of this pyro, or this Tormentor. Can't really stand Tormentor. <laughs> Baby Yeti. <laughs> baby Yeti breaks the meta, right? Everyone gets I think baby. the Fox pet was like confirmed to be like a 1-2 or something like that. It's not very good. I still don't like how high our two-point range is. I feel like we need to get rid of one two-point. Yeah, the Fox pet's a 1-2 with speed. So the question is, do I want to get rid of probably Arena regular? Probably. I mean, I don't want to yeah, get rid of Pyromancer, gonna, Crackling gonna, Bolt. If you're gonna play the, it's like the pretty much entirely human version, then arena regular probably could get the cut. Yeah, I mean, it's still useful. It is useful. I really like it, but I think it's better in the the burn oriented strategy rather. Probably than get the, rid of two of them and go up to twenty three shards. I mean, the curve kind of. Mm, yeah, with the four drops we're playing, we may want to go back up to twenty three shards. It's very much. This is something. This is the point where you got to really refine the deck. Like we've got it there, where it'll play. It'll play pretty well. But you need to like start making decisions. Like, do I really want twenty three shards or twenty two shards? Do I want to play, you know, two arena regulars and twenty three shards, or do I want to run three? I mean, you got to really make those decisions here, and and that's kind of the point we're at. Um, how good is Prince Tallison? Could I run a, a Ruby Aura so that way you know I can keep him alive a little bit more? Um, most of the stuff in the deck would actually benefit from Ruby Aura, especially Falconeer. So it wouldn't be bad to run like a one or a two of Ruby Aura, maybe instead of this Arena regular. Um, yeah, or Crushing or, Blow. Even. Or even Rage Fire doesn't feel like it's going to be good enough for this deck. You know, like it's good. Yeah, you could you but could it's cut so Rage slow. Fire. Crushing you could just move it to the reserves or something, you know. Maybe if you're yeah. playing in that control matchup versus Blood Diamond control when you need to have a four-point removal card, Rage Fire maybe might get you that, um, you know, for that turn two put, angel. You can put Ruby Lance in the sideboard too. Yeah, three Gorefeast. Yeah, it, like if you're running three Gorefeast in here, I would. you definitely have to run 23 shards is what I would say. So, I mean... Uh, I mean, I'll, I guess I'll just leave it up to you, Armies. I mean, what, where would you go with this? Which direction would you go with this deck? Uh, I think they're moving their Rage Fires to the sideboard is fine. Because we do have Crackling Bolt yeah. and Burn, so that's pretty good for the early game. And if we need more cheap removal, we could always bring it in out of the board. Right. And we, we will have Legionnaire of Gwane, too, so that can just wipe out a field, too. But so. you want Gwane in here? I think if you're if you're playing humans with as much inspire like we I know we only have like it's exciting what, ten, that's for sure ten we've got like ten inspire humans in here I mean it's not the greatest but you can well, still it's like a two of you know yeah I mean getting getting a two damage you know one sided heat wave even is really good against mono sapphire you know kill oh, yeah. all their buckets their grogs their yeah, and then you can throw them on the reserves you know? and, throw like yeah. maybe one or two on the reserves. 
Um, I think we're definitely going up to uh, we're definitely going up to 23 shards though for doing that, and then we can go ahead and get that extra gore feast in here. Now, do you think that we should go with arena regular? Or do you think we should trade it for ruby aura? Um, uh, I mean, we are gaining a decent amount of charges with the crackling think, bolts and the crackling I, vortex. I think I would start with crushing blow in the main deck and probably have the ruby auras in the sideboard because I think. Mm. Like if the matchups where Crushing Blow is good, it's better than Ruby Aura, and Ruby Aura is only good in certain matchups where your opponent's actually blocking you, and whereas Crushing Blow is better against chump blocks. I could see which that. Which is theoretically my what son's you're favorite to card do. right there. There's that Crimson <laughs> Clarity man. He loves it. <laughs> he loves it. Just can't can't get enough of it. He wants more of it. All right, so we, we definitely want the witch. Obvious, obvious answers are witch, which I can't spell right now. W i t c h. You would think I would know how to spell that by now. Oh, I already have it on there. So we actually have enough time to like throw down some reserves here. Let's see, we've got the legionnaire queen, the rage fire, Edmure's fire witch, the ruby aura. Um, I'm not sure what else we would, we could we could throw like we need it would be nice if there was uh, constant removal but we know Ruby will probably never have that um, so we might end up having to throw in like like a uh, chaos keys I don't know two chaos uh, keys I don't seems think pretty deck, bad though I don't think the deck gets to play it gets to actually get to the point where it casts and uses yeah, chaos and, key and very it's, often and it's effective yeah I don't I don't really. You know, it's always good to have uh, ideas. I don't even think I'd play Heat Wave in this deck. Everything in the deck dies to Heat Wave except Legionnaire of Gwaim. It's so pretty I don't super... Think yeah, if... if so, so you could play Heat Wave if the whole meta was uh, Ruby, Mono Ruby. If there was like a, a large market share that was Mono Ruby because then you basically wait for your opponent to overextend and then you Heat Wave on game two with when you put like two in the reserves. It's playable, but in a very specific narrow situation. Um, otherwise, I typically wouldn't play it. I, I think your Legionnaire Gawain is your heat wave. So. Yeah, definitely much better than <laughs> him. What do you think about Suppressive Fire for all those uh, lurking angel, or maybe Veteran Gladiator might be better. Veteran Gladiator, I think, could go in the reserves, like as a two of. You know? Because it removes blockers. And when you're playing against Mono Blood, which are definitely, or I'm sorry, Blood, Blood Diamond Control, a lot of times they only have one blocker, and so Veteran Gladiator can help you deal with that until this Soul Marble gets fully leveled up, that is. What else? What else could we put in here? Uh, sideboard could contain Fissure Smiths. Those cards are really good if there's a lot of other aggro decks that you're playing against. Yeah, it's really unfortunate that input limbs is just not that useful right now. Now this is another one where like if the meta starts trending towards lots and lots of artifacts, then input limbs will probably see more play. But right now we're just not there. Well, I mean, if we get to the point where there's that many artifacts, you might just sideboard total meltdown instead. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, that's another one you could use. I always like having it on a stick with a body, but um, you know, I would, you know, I, I, if I was to do the split, I might run two to three hoodlums and one total meltdown or something in the reserves. If it was like that big of a deal. Uh, what did you say? You just said something. And I didn't put it in here. Fisher Smith. Fisher Smith. I'm looking. Is a possible. It it's removal with a body if your opponent is playing aggressive ground based strategies. Fiss. Or it's a fog if you if they don't attack because you have a tunneled guy. <laughs> Destroy the troop at random, and then it surfaces. Yeah, could kill Gralks. No, it doesn't work on flyers. I thought it says it does. Oh, it. No, no, without flying. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it's useless against mono, it's, it's, mono it's, sapphire. Well, it's not useless. It can still kill buccaneers and dreamers. It's, it's mostly useless. It's it's half effective. It's better against the other ruby decks. So this is another like place decks. where you're gonna make make your decisions. You know, you're gonna depending on what you think is gonna be good versus certain meta, where you're gonna. Yeah, how popular aggro is versus right. control. Right, and like, you know, how much life gaining you're going to see. Like, if we saw a lot of two-pack, then Ember Spire Witch obviously is a lot better in that matchup for you. Um, you probably would run Ember Spire Witch plus Veteran Gladiator to get rid of some of the blockers and stuff. 
Um, you, know, you have some decisions you can make here to help out with those situations. Um, I don't know that Gwen being the one-sided sweep is going to be that useful, except for against the the current uh, Ruby Sapphire. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Gorfi's deck. Gorfi's um, deck. It could be good against Mono Sapphire if you know they just grow to your your field of like two pyromancers or whatever, and you can kill a buccaneer and a crawl with your Gwen or something. Yeah, it, it's it, it has its places. It's I don't not. Know, man, I really like this Prince. Man, I I think that I'm. I would try to play more of them in the deck. I I really like this. I, I it's like virtual card drawing, you know. It's. I think it's a reasonable card, but I think if you're going to play it, then you have to play, like, I don't know, you have to play a lot more ways to get him through, like suppressive fires and crushing blows. And You know what, let's go ahead and look I, at I, the other guy's deck right now, we'll go ahead and save this. This one's pretty much completed, we, we got it pretty well done. Let's go ahead and, somebody just posted their version, it's, uh, reloaded, so let's go ahead and open link in... Actually, let's just copy the selected link so I can open it up. Um, and you can go ahead and talk about what you're going to talk about while I'm doing this. Yeah, I, I just think as a 3-1 without any form of evasion, he's not going to be that great. I think he might see play in the, like, Ruby Sapphire decks because you can, like... You have a lot more ways to, you know, bounce the guy out of the way and then, you know, get in with your guy and then you have a lot of cheap two drops and one drop removal and stuff that, like, when you remove the card, you can still, like, oh, it's a bird, I burn your face, or, you know, that kind of thing. I don't know if he's going to be that good in a monocolored deck. All right, here we go. So in his deck, he is running a crazy... Wow, that's quite a curve you got there. Uh, so... <laughs> So he's running the two Chaos Keys, a four Ruby Lance, which is actually really good removal for to get those that stuff out of the way. Uh, the two Ash Harpies, which has been popular amongst some people. It's a very good card when you're talking about uh, uh, limited play, if you happen to pick it up in your first pack. Uh, the four Obligatory Burns, four Burn to the Ground for some removal to Rass. So he's playing much more of a mid-range control type of deck is what it looks uh like. The first, the first thing I see when I look at this deck is there's not enough shards to be playing six and seven drops. Yeah. What have we got, 23? Yeah, you probably want to be at the 24 or even 25 area, honestly, with this deck. Um, you could probably get rid of a Chimes and play another shard in here, and that would help out quite a bit. Um, I've played a deck that's very similar to this, and instead of playing Polka, I play uh, some more uh, artifacts, and you play with, what's his name, uh... Uh, the the dwarf that deals damage equal to your biggest artifact. Oh, um, Farney. Farney, yeah, I think Farney is actually a better fit for the control shell if you're trying to play mono ruby control. Um, the problem is you have to play with a lot of decent artifacts, um, but it's some of the similar, very similar to this. Um, I also play with uh, what's her name that basically does the same thing as Chimes, uh, the orc. Uh, Tatalka. I oh, also play Tatalka. with Tatalka. <laughs> yeah, I also play Tatalka in here. So you, you might consider replacing Rampaging Tras with Tatalka. But you know, this this is an interesting deck. As the problem is the drawing cards, and so I've also toyed with Fulmination, but a lot of times that doesn't seem to help out that much either. Um, this guy says he never gets shard screwed because of Hex Engine. I mean, I suppose. Um, I mean, uh, this, even, this deck. Even even getting to four with Hex Engine can be pretty sketchy on 23 shards. Yeah. I get screwed all the time in 25 shard decks, so I don't know. It's... I, in, in my version, I play a play set of Chaos Key because it does deal with ev everything that, you know, your burn spells can't get to. Um, You're not always going to draw Fulmination. Like, I've been making a deck with a set two card that's a scheme deck based on Fulmination. The games that it draws Fulmination, it crushes. Like, there's nothing that can stand against it when you have Fulmination and you're just scheming more mastery of times into your deck. But when you don't have Fulmination, the deck just falls apart. It runs out of removal or tempo to keep them off the board, and you're just... Yeah, Fulmination is a two-edged sword. You, It's good when you have it, and it's terrible when you don't. So. Probably the best strengths of this deck are the quick-action burn and the quick-action ruby lance, I say. 
Uh, and I would say that because you've got things, you know, talking about, again, going back to what the metagame is right now, you've got Mono Sapphire, which is trying to play things and then swing through and just exhaust your whole board state. Um, so Burn and uh, Ruby Lance do pretty well versus that. Um, and then, of course, there's the, uh, what is it called, the uh, Gore Storm, Gore Feast deck, which is very important to have both Burn and Ruby Lance um, to respond to that swinging uh, Falconeer. Um, versus the Blood Diamond Control, I don't know if you would have some problems. It really depends on who gets the better draw and who draws less shards once it is that, you know, Blood Diamond has, whatever, five or six shards in play. It depends on who top decks less shards once it is that you have five and six shards in play um, as far as who's going to win in that matchup. Um, but, you know, your Burns and your Ruby... Your Ruby Lance will kill stuff eventually... Burn's probably not going to do too much in that matchup. Chaos Key helps, but it's it's very, very slow. Your Hex Engine's good also, um, but I feel like their threats are probably just a lot better than yours overall. Um, plus, allowing them to draw cards, that's like one of the things, one of the big downfalls to Blood Diamond is the fact that they don't draw a lot of cards, and playing that Fulmination, allowing them to draw lots of cards is probably not where you want to be. Um, especially because they can actually, once you play a Fulmination, they can actually get rid of it with uh, at least... Solitary Exile. With, with ex yeah, they can Exile it, and now they're a card, technically a card ahead of you, um, although they had to use that Exile on your thing, so, I mean, there is that, but, you know, it's it's good-ish. I'd say this is more of a Tier 2-ish deck. I've played a very similar deck to this, um, I've and when it draws, decks this too, yeah. I mean, when you when you draw, well, other, it feels good. But if you don't draw, it's it's yeah. It's the it's other huge best. weakness to decks that play cerebral fulmination is any deck that plays mastery of time, because they just get so much more value out of their out of these your cerebral fulminations than you will. Because every mastery of time, they just get an extra card on top of what they already get, which is why the schemes deck is so good with fulmination, but. I'm I'm still not yeah, a big fan those, of scheme. I think I yeah scheme scheme is definitely like a a one point five very, two two type deck. It's it's a it's a very Johnny S <laughs> card. Um, it is it is actually really good with Renlock, but yeah, I mean, I mean so so let's let's look at some of the bad hands with this too. Um, like so, like you draw, you open up with like two rampaging Tarask, a chimes. And two and, shards. And, like, two <laughs> shards. <laughs> Not the best. Um, I mean, you could get there, but, I mean, you have Heat Wave, so that could help a bit. Let's but, see. Uh, there, there are statistics on this. Let's see. You um, get screwed 17.21% of the time and flood 11.84%, which isn't terrible, but I'd rather flood more than I screw when I'm playing a deck that has six and seven drops. So right, I drawing think a start, hand. Definitely. <laughs> so we open up with Chimes, a Burn to the Ground, a Rage Fire, and a Heat Wave, which is not bad for removal. So we have removal for a lot of the early stuff, and we have three shards. That's not bad. I, I just drew a hand, and I would probably mulligan. It's two rubies, a ruby lance. we draw lance, another Heat Wave and a Fulmination. A Hex but, Engine and a Rampaging Tarrasque. You have no turn one play, no turn two play. Yeah, like this one's a pretty bad hand. You'd have to mull this one. That one's pretty bad. So we can go back. To, we can actually go back to our deck and actually do a quick test draw. We got about five minutes left in the episode to recap here, so we'll do our test draw on our. This one is an actual regular aggro deck, though, so it's it's kind of not really a fair comparison. It's not drawing these undefined cards, probably because those are set two cards. So it's really hard to. Yeah, unfortunately, if I do a hand draw, I'm not getting a good idea of what it. this is. Yeah. The worst card we can draw in this deck is probably Legionnaire Gwen in our opening hand. Um, Falcon yeah, actually isn't only... even that bad as long as we draw two or less of them. Um, and, yeah. you know, two to three shards, we're in really good shape. Um, probably your your best opening hand is something like uh, probably like turn one, Wounded War Hero, turn two. Now, that turn your, two your best Fire opening Master. hand... No, no, no. The best opening hand is three of your one drops because they're they'll all be three ones for one if you have three of them. Well, that's true. Yeah, you, you, you have to <laughs> draw three of these guys. Yeah, yeah. So, 
All right, we're going to close out the episode here and stick around. We do have a uh, giveaway to do. Um, oh, and just so everyone's aware, uh, with the contest from the YouTube, I forgot to mention this, but like if you are on this list, I'm going to go ahead and spout off real quick. These are people that basically signed up for the contest and didn't follow the instructions. It was simple instructions. I said post on the video and then post your in-game name. These are people that did not post their in-game name. So unfortunately, I can't give you a draft pack, but I will uh, allow you to ask me for a specific rare of your choice out of the list I will give you after this. So these people did not give me their in-game names. Uh, Joshua G, Chad Maynard, Matthew Fernandez, Trent Phillips, Skivor, Skir, Skirovic, S-K-I-R-O-V-I-K, J Mac D, Stormchild 3, Dan Lee, at me smile, Meng Wang, and I think he just wanted me to say Wang there, uh, Elskez, and Fabrice PX. So if you are any of those people and you subscribe to me on YouTube, because you should be seeing this episode next week or next this weekend, um, and you want something, message me through YouTube or through one of my things and uh, let me know which of the following rares you want. Unfortunately, I cannot give you a draft pack because that would be unfair to everyone else that followed the rules. All right, these are the rares you can get unless I give one of them away tonight. Uh, so I've got two, or I'll just read them off. Droz Walker, Lord Benjamin, The Wise, Prophet of Lodgan, uh, Ozawa, Legionary Gwain, Replicator's Gambit, Incantation of Ascendance, Incantation of Savagery, Crown of the Primals, Lixel the Deathless Gem, Kindling Scarn, Mancubus, Verdant Wildebore, Gastrol Puck, and I just recently picked up an Azumi, which is a lucky Azumi because she won me my draft last week. And so, um, if you are any one of those people, please message me through here. And on top of that, uh, if you guys want me to get this cool interview with Christy Golden and you want to, uh, you know, post a message on this YouTube video when it goes to YouTube, that is. So, closing out the episode now. Tonight on Deck Moon of the Squire, we talked about the uh, lawsuit update, which is unfortunate news that we have to cover that. Uh, the Hextech's open, which is tomorrow. So if you haven't signed up, you still have time. Go and sign up on their website. It's on, um, it's, it's on the Reddit thread. So it's on the second page of the Reddit thread as far as the link to it. And there is only two banned cards, which really won't affect anything. The new five shards ahead, or five shards, uh, not five shards ahead, the fiveshards.com website, which is a new conglomeration that's picking up a lot of good um, content providers. Who knows? Maybe in the future I might maybe move Deckbone to Squire over there. We'll see. Uh, the Accidental Night is now on digital, so if you're a Kickstarter backer, go ahead and download that, read it, and don't spoil anything to me because I'm going to try to read it, and it takes me forever to read things. And then we went over the Friday update where um, next weekend, on Thanksgiving weekend, we're going to be doing all of the, uh, what are they called, the VIP tournaments. And we capped things off with this wonderful Mono Ruby deck. And uh, we also talked about a Mono Ruby, this one's an aggro deck, and we talked about a Mono Ruby control deck. And if you don't mind, I can go ahead and uh, post your deck reloaded on the uh, this video and um, you know we could get pick up some more comments on that so don't be afraid to comment on the video especially if you want to get this interview with Christy Golden off the ground because we really need you guys to give us some good questions some good feedback that we can uh, submit to Cryptozoic that they can get over to her and eventually get this great interview with her um, not that we don't love armies of Mordor <laughs> but, um, yeah, she wrote a book. So, there is that. Till next time, this is Aaron Squire signing off, saying God bless your families, trying to race too much out there, and Armies of Mordor saying... Signing off. Signing off.